so welcome to uh, session six, which is the final um, webinar in our Creative Futures program. Um, so for those of you who are new, and this is your first session, um, as you can see, we're using Zoom today. Um, and the only functions that we're going to be using is uh, the chat function. So if you have any questions for any of our panelists today, um, just type them into the chat. Um, we're going to answer all the questions at the end of the session. So just pop them in the chat. You might see raised hand, um, but that's kind of irrelevant. We, we don't need that today. So yes, yeah, just the chat function. Um, and then we're also doing polls. Um, so at the end, we might launch some polls and that will just bring up a box and you just got to tick which one you think is relevant to you. So that's the two functions of Zoom webinar today. Um, so I hand you over to my colleague, Jess, who's going to introduce Study Higher. Hi everyone, yeah, for those of you who might not have heard of us before, this might be your first webinar with us. Um, Study Hire is a partnership of different universities and colleges from across Swindon, Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire. And our job is to work with secondary school students to put on different events and activities like Creative Futures to help you make informed decisions about your future. Um, so we are delighted this evening to be joined by Access Creative College um, and we have Gemma and Tom with us today. Um, there they are, <laughs> the lovely smiling faces. We're really, really pleased for them to join us um, and hand over to you guys. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Gemma and uh, my colleague Tom is with us today and we're from Access Creative College. Um, and we're an independent training provider that offers courses in the creative industries. Um, so the pathways that we cover are music, media, games and computing. Uh, we're just going to start with a video just to give you a bit of an insight into more about what we do and why we might be a great place for you to start your creative journey. So, Tom, take it away. Hi and welcome to Access Creative College. Thank you for showing interest. My name's Adrian Merchant. I'm the Engagement and National Events Manager. Let's meet the rest of the team. My name's Charlie. I'm the Engagement Coordinator of Access Creative College. Hi, my name's Lois and I'm an Engagement Officer. The future is creative. In an age of automation, creativity is and will continue to be a key part and very desirable aspect of any industry. In the creative industries, we use technology in aid of creativity, not to replace it. Now a quote from Albert Einstein. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited to all we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. Creativity is important because without creativity you wouldn't have TV, radio, music, um, favourite photography, magazines, the list goes on. Without creativity we, we don't have these outlets. Books, I can sit all day and read, uh, read things, but these things are yeah, so important for so many people all around the world for so many different reasons. Yeah, I think the world would be really stale without creativity. It would be really bland and a boring place to live. So we place ourselves in the creative quarters for the collaboration aspect and the opportunities that we have within those places. It definitely helps them to see what happens in real life industry. And by placing them in these places, we bring them away from where they're comfortable and bring them into working environments. Um, we try and do that with our courses too. We're trying to implicate as much industry knowledge and experience as we can. So by putting ourselves there, it's a lot easier for industry to come to us. Yeah, um, they're immersed in creativity and culture, but not sort of in this kind of like gray clinical space. They're like, they've got culture and creativity all around them. So it's difficult for them to not be inspired by their space. And we can open those doors for them too. Yeah, um, exactly. Give them the connections for the venues, for yeah, the different media companies around, etc., and try and link those two together. Uh, what would you guys say to anyone that was unsure about entering the creative industry as a potential career path, especially with everything that's been going on with lockdown and? As we all know, it's had it's had a negative effect on the creative industries, um, but there is some positive news out there as well. Um, so we've seen things like BBC iPlayer have more views than ever, um, PlayStation sales are out of the roof. If, if you look at it from the surface at the moment, I know it, it looks very shaky and um, not very secure, but you've just got to look at the economy pre-COVID, like 3.2 million jobs in the country. Uh, by 2024, we're predicted to increase that by 5.4%, which is huge. Um, I know it looks bleak at the moment, but we definitely believe that it will bounce back, it, yeah. if not stronger than ever. Um, it might take a little while to get there, but yeah, I, I'd say have faith. 
Italy. I think a, 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 why a lot of people may be in two minds as well is because they have um, sort of outside influences as well that are trying to push them down a certain route. What my message is to sort of, if you are in that situation, um, that you're sort of like getting two messages, go creative, go sort of like the academic route, is be you, go follow your passion, follow your desire, and be what you want to be. Don't be what someone else wants you to be, yeah? So if you want to be a games designer, be a games designer, you know? Don't let someone try and deter you away from that and sort of like laugh at you and say, oh, you're never gonna be a uh, become a games designer. Follow your passion, follow your dreams. Yeah. My favorite quote on that is, um, find something that you love to do, you'd happily do this every day for the rest of your life for free, you'd happily do this, and then find someone to pay you to do it. Uh, why not take this next couple of years to train and be at the forefront of it? Why do you think it's um, important that our students sort of collaborate across the courses that we have? So we, we kind of built our courses for that purpose. Um, yeah, if you look at our course list, just for a few examples, if, if you're a music performer um, and you want to put on a gig, you'd speak to our events production students. Um, they could get a venue sorted. And of course, while you're having a gig, you're going to need sound engineers, etc. Um, to promote it, you're going to need a poster. You get our graphic designers to do so. Um, there's nothing like post-event post, post event promotion. So photographers and videographers um, can create content for you. So yeah, it's really important to us to have different courses that feed into each other. Um, yeah, you're all working around creative people. So whether you go into the lunch area and someone's sat there making a game or music, they're still creating and that's gonna spur you on to do the same kind of thing. I agree. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think, Lois? Yeah, you can definitely learn from like other students as well as your tutors. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that's quite often forgotten. It's not just about who you're being taught by, it's about who you're in the classroom with or who you see like around the like campus at lunchtime, that sort of thing. Yeah, something that's really important. You can get inspiration wherever you are in the campus. Mm -hmm. because of that. It, I think it also gives the students as well the, the real world effect of how the industry actually works as well yeah. by that collaboration. So it's getting them geared ready. For, well, it's giving them life skills and getting them geared ready for that career that they, that they want to pursue as well. And by being taught by teachers that, that have actually actively worked in or still work in that industry as well, and they can give them real information about how it actually is working in that world. Yeah. This year we're starting ACC Live, which is our industry um, part of the curriculum, which will combine industry and real learning and working in real life industry situations. It just gives people more experience and so our students leave us knowing what to expect in the wider world of creative industry. So we have industry week, a way for them to immerse themselves in the industry and so when they leave the college they've got like the vital skills ready to enter that industry so that's everything from mass classes workshops and guest talks that kind of stuff we offer music and events media and design games and computing and music tech yes <laughs> so we are 29 years young now um, traditionally access creative college was a music college and we've been doing that very well for many many years um, in the last four years we've seen that expand and we've started to go into different areas so what can you tell us about the new areas that we've started yeah so the new areas that started obviously as charlie's mentioned is that we started to build our foundations on music and as time went on we implemented different part of the creative industries within our courses so we implemented uh, media games and events and new now is going to be computing and we're also going to be introducing t levels as well so if someone <laughs> was to walk in here now and uh, never heard of us before how would you explain to them what we are and what we do? Well, um, I would say we're a creative college. Um, so we specialise in subjects surrounding the creative industry. It's not just the kind of sit in the classroom, answer questions, do an exam kind of college. It's a hands-on approach college where you can really get involved and pick up key industry skills and knowledge and experience. <laughs> One of the great things about Access Creative College, I would say, is our tutors. Um, we've touched on this earlier, that all of our tutors are still currently active in the industry that they're teaching. So, for example, our game design tutor is still out there making games. Um, and that just gives the, 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 the students sort of first-hand knowledge into the career that they're pursuing um, and just give them a better understanding in the industry that they're, that they're pursuing as well. Not name-dropping here, but we've had quite a few um, Famous people sort of go through our doors as well with students and come out the other end and do really well. Um, like Ed Sheeran, Jess Glynn, Rita Ora, just to name a few. Um, and again, for me, why they've done so well goes back to our tutors because they're still currently active in the industry. They've passed on that knowledge to them. So after um, a student's finished at Access Creative College, what sort of destinations and routes can they take? 
If a student wants to, they could definitely go to university. Our level three courses are the equivalent to three A levels and you can accumulate the same UCAS points as you could do from three A levels to go to university. Um, we have quite an even split. Those that want to go to university do, and those that want to go to work in the industry generally do as well, if they're dedicated and determined enough. Thank what would you say about that Access Creative College's reputation? I'd say we've got a great reputation um, within the education sector and industry. Um, we were graded good by Ofsted. Yeah, I'm very, very proud to be a part of the Access Creative College team. Uh, it's been great watching people come through the doors um, and never even open a music production software to leave in with full tracks, for example. Mm. Um, it's going to be even more exciting. We've got more courses added for next year, so eSports management um, and some creative computing courses too. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of those and um, whether we end up with any full apps or, yeah, anyone making the next... I don't want to mention any names. Uh. I'm, I'm really excited about esports because I'm into gaming, um, and I'm really and I watch esports on Sky Sports as well. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm really sort of excited about esports because hopefully you never know that one of our students might be on Sky Sports or part of an esports team. The industry is huge. The economy of an esports is insane. Um, there's more money in the games industry than the rest of the creative industries combined. So, looking at music, TV, radio, film, all of those things combined come nowhere near to games. So yeah, very happy that we're gonna start helping put towards that economy and hopefully put some students into the world of that work. So Lewis, what do you think Access Creative College can offer a potential student? Um, well, I think if you're a practical learner, it's definitely the place for you because it's um, hands-on experience. You can take a hands-on approach and that's how you can learn. If you're someone that learns from not just being shown something, but actually being involved and like trying it for yourself, it's definitely the um, place for you because you can actually immerse yourself in what you're learning about and actually see for yourself and try it for yourself and create a product out of that. Say if you're doing music production, you might create a track from that. And I think that's the best way um, for a lot of people to learn. It's not all about exams, right? So exactly, very lucky yeah. at Access Creative College, um, there's no examination for our main courses. Obviously for maths and English, um, that's a little bit different, but for our main course, it's very practical based at learning. For a level three course, you need four GCSEs and above. But what are the benefits, would you say, of maths and English, Charlie, within the creative careers? Uh, really, really important. Um, if you're going to work anywhere within the creative sectors, you're, you're going to send a lot of emails, you're going to be doing your own invoicing, for example. Um, a few examples, if you want to get into games design, you're going to spend a lot of time working with code, which is maths. If you're a photographer, you're going to work with things like rule of thirds, etc, etc. Music producers work with frequencies, which are numbers, and work within a number. Um, yeah, if you're, you're working in events, you're going to have to do risk assessments and write a lot of official documents like that. Um, I think it's very, very important to have those skills so you can come across professional and are, are able to do that role. Yeah. So it benefits our students for their day-to-day -day yeah. living then, basically. Maths and English is important in, in all aspects of life, really. But yeah. I feel like Access Creative College teach it in a re relevant and interesting way. So at Access Creative College, our ethos is to master your craft. That's what we want people to do. What does that mean to you? What that means to me is follow your passion, your desire, your integrity um that to me means master your craft do you know what i mean thank you very much for your time today and to listen to us speak now you're going to be shown around our facilities and have a chance to talk with some of our tutors <laughs> sweat patches <laughs>all right, you can hear me. Yeah, um, I, there's a few questions coming into the chat. We are going to be able to um, have a, a QA and a session at the end because I know you might have a lot of things to ask about us, um, being as we are a, a little bit different from your normal um, college or, or normal provider. So, yeah, please feel free to drop the questions in the chat. We will get to them um, once we've shown you a little bit more. OK. Um, so we've got a brand new campus um, at Bristol. Um, it's a, actually a brand new five million pound games and media um, complex, which is based in the city centre. Um, and this is completely furnished with state of the art industry standard technology, which includes custom made um, overclock PCs. We have um, iMac media labs. We've got virtual reality suite, a uh, green suite, uh, a green street. <laughs> Yeah, let me get my teeth back in, a green screen studio. Um, our music students as well will get access um, to, they'll benefit from using our uh, professional music studios uh, to rehearse and perform in. 
um, as well as all of our students having opportunities outside of the um, campus to you know um, take part in all manner of events and things like that um, so we're just going to show you a quick uh, video like Charlie mentioned in the in the video we just uh, showed you of what the campus is looking like now OK, so that's just a little sneak peek. If you do want to have more of an in-depth look, if you do go to our website um, at the end, we have got a um, 360 tour that you can um, manoeuvre your way around so you can actually have a proper look um, at the facilities and, and the campus. Um, so at Access Creative, um, we, we encourage collaboration. We want you to understand about the creative industries as a whole, not just as an individual pathway. Um, but there's lots of things that you need to consider when you're looking at what you're going to get into, um, you know, as a career pathway. Um, and there's lots of different jobs that you might have never even thought of. So we've actually designed something that, that can sort of help you um, identify um, the sort of things that you um, might want to get into. So Tom's just going to show you um, our careers maps that might give you a bit of an idea. So you might be interested in games, but you might not know where, um, what, what kind of careers that might lead you into. You might be interested in music, um, but you might not know uh, what next steps you need to take to get to a certain way. So we're just going to just show you quickly a few of our career maps. Yeah, so the career maps are really there so that you can understand the different job roles in the, in the industries. So we focus on music, media, gaming, events and computing, um, but there's also the extended industries as well, which I'll touch on in a second. Um, but if we were to just look at this website for a sec, then I'll just go into say music. Uh, so if we look at the music career maps. So in music, we are focusing on the, the stuff that we teach. So because we do like music performance, we do music technology, we do vocal artists, we do loads of different kind of music courses, as well as all the other um, creative courses that we do in our centers. Um, this focuses on the key job areas in those roles. So everything from performance, you can see there, composition, uh, production, and industry and education. So again, these are not every single job that's role that's obviously in these industries, but it just focuses on the key ones uh, in those in those actual fields and those subsections. The great thing about these maps is that we haven't just done it for music; we've done it for all of the creative industries. But also, if we click on individual um, individual tiles, that you'll see a bit more about all the different job roles that, that happen around this. So, say for instance, if we were to click on uh, DJ, then if I just scroll here, you can see just a bit little blurb about what a dj does um basically what we want to do with these sites is that you may turn around and think hmm i want to do music but i don't know if i want to do performance i don't know if i want to do production i don't know if i want to be in the studio i don't know if i want to be on the stage this is the kind of area to, for us to kind of help um students kind of deter which kind of job roles that there are in all those different sections so that when you come out with a level three qualification or if you're to do a level two then do a level three whether you go into university whether you get into the actual industry you can kind of see already you can kind of uh, see what kind of job roles are kind of in the future for you and that you might be able to go down the good thing about our courses as well is that a lot of students will start a course they could do say music production they could do uh, music performance and they can think well actually that's what i want to do and then they learn about all the different aspects because we do business modules as well of that industry where they turn around and go well actually I didn't realize that all these other jobs were part of it that's actually really interesting so we do teach you more than just what the core subject is we teach you about the business side of things and, and the industry side of things because at, at the end of the day the obviously the main goal is whether you're doing college or university level is that you need to get your well, you want to get a job in that industry at the end of it so that's what we're trying to be able to show this in, in a more interesting um, way rather than just say over, over slides or whatever these are like principal maps that you're able to just go through obviously the pdfs as well um, if i just look at the kind of extended industries and i think this is an interesting part because even myself i was part of the team that put this website together 
I even I wasn't thinking about the kind of more jobs that there actually is in that industry. Like I didn't realize that museums, galleries, and libraries. I didn't realize architecture and things like that actually all fall under the creative industries. Um, obviously, visual performance uh, and, and things like that, and fashion. I, I kind of put two and two together there. But I never thought about jobs like I don't know a risk assessor, uh, fire risk assessor, or a town planner, um, or you know a, a building um, control surveyor. I didn't even think about these kind of jobs. And there are students that have gone and done graphic and digital design with us and then gone into say architecture um so there is loads of different kind of job roles that are available um even if it isn't again the core subject that you want to do within the creative industries it's very vast it's very big um and that's the main the main kind of thing that we wanted to get out of there um also we have uh on our mock interview section of this website um we have a fantastic little breakdown of the roles as well though within these industries and kind of the key um kind of the kind of key kind of uh, areas of work uh, income and what you need to do and, and kind of what you need to have and the skills that you need to have to also do these roles so say for argument's sake this is a sound engineer but if we go down a bit you can see like the different areas that a sound engineer needs to work in and, and what they need to do and the income they make so just for argument's sake what what they need to be as a sound engineer well you need to be a good listener uh, you need to know uh, about science and, and music uh, uh, how, how science and music works together like how we perceive hearing and how we actually um are is perceiving and how we can put that together and make it real and, and, and to us in the real world how we can work together obviously team leader skills and problem solvers and the ability to network as well which is very important in all of the creative industries is how we can actually network with each other um also the areas of work so even though um it's sound engineer is the is the is the kind of subject that you can go down it that doesn't mean that that's all you're going to ever be as a sound engineer sound engineers are used in studios to make games uh they used uh in real um actual bigger environments like live events even like sports events not enough even to do with music um even like front of house and gigs and festivals so there's loads of different job roles which which um like a, just as a sound engineer would go down and again it isn't just music that we focus on here we're focusing on all the key uh the core aspects of the creative industries and the extended industries so even stuff that we don't even do so it's really good just to kind of have a look at this website which we can show you today for yourselves to, to have a better bit of better knowledge about as well Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, we will. If you want to explore these uh, for yourself, we will be putting links into the chat at the end. Um, I think that one of the main things that you need to realise about um, Access Creative College is um, if you're choosing to study, for example, music or um, a, say a music uh, production um, course, for example, you do get to cross over into the different pathways. So you would be working alongside our game students, for example, um, to create game uh, music for their gaming, uh, that their, their games that they're creating, or you might be working alongside our uh, film, um, film and video uh, students to put to do post audio production on something that they've created. So I think there was a question actually that um, that popped into the chat from Lu is it Lewis? Um, I want to become an indie designer that doesn't have a composer on their team. Can they take the program in games design and music? So. Um, I, uh, from what I understand of the question, you, are you asking if we can uh, you can study more than one course? Because the, the thing with our course is that you would just study the one course with us. Um, but as I've mentioned before, all of these courses do cross over into lots of different ways. Collaboration is one of the main elements of the creative industries. You'd never just be working with one individual area. So we want you to experience the same things that you'd experience in the industry, whether that be working with students. Um, across different courses um, or whether we get industry professionals in to explain their journey into their careers. Um, we have some interesting uh, conversations with our students. They may have come in, uh, you know, thinking, oh, I I'm going to be um, a singer on a stage forever, you know, and, and they study vocal artists. But then actually, once they start to explore the industry a little bit more, and exploring how it can overlap into different areas, they might come out actually thinking, actually, I wanna do voiceovers for games because that was a part of the course that I really enjoyed uh, doing. Or we've got students who've come in to study um, sound engineering with us and they're actually going on to university uh, to study music business because they, they want to um, focus more on the marketing, the management um, and that side of things. So it really does open up your eyes. It, it, there's very few students that come to study us with 
um, with that one track mind. And if those that do will succeed, um, but it's good to come to actually see the sort of areas that you can move into. Um, so we have got an um, opportunity. Um, I'm not sure how long we've got, but um, we did say that we would answer some questions for you. So I'll just go back to the initial question that Reese asked at the beginning. So T levels. Um, there was a big thing about T levels um, uh, uh, last year. It's a new qualification that's coming in um, across lots of different areas. Um, and T levels are actually kind of a mixture between an apprenticeship and an A level. So the idea being that you spend 80 percent um, of your time in the centre in campus studying and then 20 percent in your second year um, you cover um, actually in an industry placement. Um, and the pathway that we're going to be offering initially is in digital production design and development. But there's going to be about 15 different pathways. So it's definitely worth looking at. If you want to know more about that, Reese. Um, I would suggest you book a meet and greet. So um, and then Charlie, who is um, based in our Bristol campus, will be able to explain a bit more about the offer that we're giving at Access Creative College. Um, and then there was another question. What doors are we using? Yeah, so I don't mind answering that one. So, yeah, the digital audio workstations that we use at Access are, is Logic is the main one that we use. So all our music techies and when the performers get their hands on it and even our games and media students that do need to put music to their films and their TV shows and and, uh, and, and games and everything that they put together, they use Logic. Um, it's industry standard um, stuff. Even back in the day when, when I was studying, that's what we used, um, which feels like a long, long long time ago now but even still um it's the best uh, it's the best kind of stuff i think that for, for students just because it's quite simple to use don't get me wrong um a lot of techies will you like to use loads of different uh, types like cubase um and even like the the kind of earlier stuff that students get their hands on schools which is like fr studio or fruity loops as a, as a lot of people might remember it called or audacity um but yeah we use logic um and yeah again it's just the kind of the best stuff that that we have in the centers whether any course that we do we want to make sure that you're still using the same equipment, the same software, same hardware that you would use once, once you get into the actual creative industries as well and do those kind of jobs. Um, so Scarlett's just said about what do we do surrounding graphic design. Um, Scarlett, we actually do a graphic and digital design course. That's part of our media package. So graphic and digital design or you can do film, video and photography. You also might want to look at the games art course, um, as we've said before. Um, if you're studying in a specific area, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you, you're tied to that pathway forever. Um, but if it's graphic design or if it's art based sort of courses um, using technology, then there's something for you to consider. Um, again, because we haven't got lots and lots of times. Um, Tom's put the uh, link to uh, our meet and greets. So that's an opportunity for you to either get a phone call or a video call with one of the team and we can talk through um, those uh, a bit more uh, in depth with you. But something that's even better that we've actually got coming up on, is it next week, Tom? Yeah. Uh, is our student takeover. So that's actually an opportunity. Rather than listening to us uh, chatting away, actually talk to our students who study the courses and they can tell you uh, from their own perspective what access is about, what the courses are about. You can ask them questions and, and get the real, uh, you know, the real knowledge about, about who we are, what we do and, and how we do it. Um, and how we are different to your 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 normal um, learning environment. Um, if you wanted to create music, but also wanted to do drama and theatre, how would you work around that? And do you need specific grades for them? Um, as we said, so our music courses, we do music performance, we do vocal artists, we do music production courses as far as our music package is concerned. Um, we don't do a performing arts based one, but obviously if you were doing vocal artist or music performance, then performance is a very fundamental part of that, as well as understanding the industry and how you can develop your skills. So if you were uh, more swaying towards the music um, side of things, then it is a great platform to start on because as we said before, you don't just get limited to one route uh, that you study and you can, um, what another special thing about the way our, our modules and our courses are developed is that um, not everybody's doing the same thing. They might be given the same module title um, and what they have to, um, you know, to do. But the way that they do it is, is in a lot of different ways. So you might choose to go and pair up or work alongside some of our film video photography students, for example, if it's the performance aspect that you're wanting to develop. It, it, there's so many different ways in which you can study these courses um 
it's so exciting and it's worth exploring. So it's definitely worth a chat, Abigail. So if we do it, oh, sorry. Oh, right, sorry, <laughs> sorry I think I've just, I've just um, spotted one other one in, in the chat at the moment. Um, someone has asked, if you decide one course is better for you than the one that you're doing at the moment, how easy oh, yeah. is it to swap courses? So yeah. um, you, you you get, sorry, Tom, I'll let you answer that one because I've had too no, much. No, I was just going to say, so <laughs> obviously there's so much choice, like Gemma said, and, and, you know, what we basically do at the start of the course, we're like any other college, we start in September, you have six weeks, basically. So you have six weeks to kind of see if that course is right for you, which is a month and a half. So it's a good bit of time for you to kind of decide, actually, is this the course I want to do or do, do I want to do a different course? So, yeah, we have that kind of six kind of week probation or whatever you'd want to call it, where you can kind of figure that out. If you then decide within those six weeks that actually I want to I want to do another course that that we offer or, or elsewhere whatever that it is, then it's it's an easy transition that we're able to do as long as there's capacity because our courses do fill up really quick as well, um, especially on the games and media side uh, and, and music technology side. Um, then you know obviously we need to take that into consideration. But if we can, then yes, we will put you onto that other course and we'll make sure that you know that you'll catch up those six weeks as well and obviously progress uh, through. On to your, onto your second year as well if that's what you want to do um just to, to add on to that we've actually um because some of our courses work alongside each other um we, we've got uh, for example this year we've got some of our games tech students that are wanting to actually take the second year of our um new yeah the, the start on the new course which we're doing which is um esports management so there's sometimes there's a bit of leeway if you say for example you do music performance and you want to you decide that you want to do music production um, it's it's all about once you're there it's it's all about conversations obviously it's your journey so you know when we can we will facilitate that if we're able to and if it works in the best interests of you yeah we're free to answer any other questions that you want <laughs> um I, I will just um add to you so you might not have um have come across it when when you you might not have missed it in the actual uh video so the, the courses that we offer, so music, music performance, um, music production, um, vocal artist. We also do in the media, graphic and digital design, film, video and photography. We've got an exciting esports management course that we're starting this year. Um, we do games art and we do games technology um, and creative computing and uh, digital production design and development, which is the T level. Um, which is um, one to, to look into as well. Um, entry requirements for our level three courses are four GCSEs at grade four and above, and this includes your maths and English. If you're not going to achieve your level fours in maths and English, um, then we do offer a level two course, which is a one year course, which um, will be in your chosen area. So that's uh, games design, uh, um, build video and photography level two, music level two. Um, and we also support you in you do your uh, maths and English in house. So if you need to catch up, you'll do that in the campus and um, you'll take your exam in the campus and then you get to progress on the next year onto the level three courses. So um, we do have something to cover to cover that as well. A quick question, Gemma. Yeah. Because um, obviously you're based in Bristol, Birmingham and Lincoln, is it? Birmingham, Bristol, Lincoln, Manchester, York and London. And I I'm always miss one out, but I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> so do you have students travel from like different towns and cities? Because most oh, of my yeah. students watching are going to be in Swindon or Oxfordshire and kind of around yeah. that area. So because of our central location in whichever area we're based in, we get students coming from all over. So Tom and I are based in Birmingham. We've actually got a student who travels from Leeds every day. We have students that travel from um, Wales every day. Um, so yeah, it's, I think if you, if you know what you want and you know that um, you're wanting to explore this, um, these creative industries, then it's worth actually pushing yourself a little bit to actually, you know, take that journey. <laughs> it's only a train ride, you know. Um, our area, we, we cover such a broad range. I mean, even within Bristol, we, we cover a huge area uh, where students come from. So, yeah, but, but that's because that's why we're in that central location. So your transport links are great. So it's definitely worth looking at. <laughs> so if anyone has any other questions, um, we will. We are obviously taking applications. Our courses do fill up pretty quickly and we are getting to the end of the actual, um, you know, the year now. So applications are really easy. 
um, you just go onto our website. I think Tom's going to, yeah, he's put the link in, the, in there. Um, you just go onto our website, you click apply. Now, we're very aware that some of you may not have your mock grades or anything like that, or you may be really uncertain about what you're going to come out with. Don't let that put you off having an application. That's what your interview's for. We want to get the right students on the right course. Um, so, you know, it's in your best interest to have that conversation. Our tutors are all, um, you know, they know what they're talking about when it comes down to um, what you need and, and things like that. And so don't let that put you off. Um, do you have to audition? Yeah, if you're wanting to do our music courses, um, you are, or uh, any of our music courses, you will need to do um, a small performance. Um, and if you're doing any of our other courses, so our art courses or anything like that, um, we, we would like to see a portfolio. Again, it's to give our tutors an, you know, an idea and an understanding of who you are, what your interests are, where you want to go on to and how we can support you in that journey. So don't be scared about, uh, you know, making an application, make, having an interview. Our tutors is not like a normal, uh, a normal place. You get to call them by the first names. Um, you know, they're all industry professionals who've been in the same place that you are but they've just spent the last however many years working in the industry and now they're wanting to come and share that with you. So don't be scared about, um, you know, about things like that. It's just a great opportunity for us to know more about you. Just to touch on that as well, obviously, because of COVID and everything else at the moment, um, all of our interviews have gone on, uh, either online or via phone. So where we would usually have you come in to do an audition, such as Jim was saying, at the moment you would uh, record a piece um, mm -hmm. or you could do it live over like a, like a Zoom chat or Hangout, whichever um, you would prefer on the day. But a lot of students at the moment are recording themselves uh, playing like a, you know, a three minute song or such and then being able to send that um, over via email. So, so it's a bit less daunting if you've already mm -hmm. pre-recorded as well. Um, but yeah, normal times we would have you come in and, and we would do that. But yeah, at the moment it's, it's pre-recorded. Just think of it as another another audience person. <laughs> I'm sure the majority of students who want to do music or anything have already got their social media all sorted. So you just want to share it. Um, so, yeah, just think of it in that in that sense. And, you know, they see these are people who've been in the industry. They, they, they just want to see it, really. They, get, they love seeing uh, your work as well. So if you've got any more questions, just pop them in the chat. If not. We can we just have we got time just to show you the application part of the of the um, website if that's okay yeah you can do okay yeah um the students are i'm not sure how many year 11s we've got who'd be applying at the moment but yeah it's oh worth. of course i've completely forgot about that um although if you like what you see you can apply now <laughs> <laughs> you can or if you've got older brothers or sisters you know <laughs> yeah. um, well, I thought because we've got a few minutes left, it might be helpful if I just shared a slide because um, I know the other you know, student the best about what the different levels are because um, they may not know what level two, level three is yet. Yeah, so if yeah, I just share yeah. that very quickly and then if you yeah. can dip in with anything that relates of to your life. Yeah. Um, yep, so you can hopefully, can you all see that? Yeah. Yep. Um, so essentially, because um, Gemma's been talking to you about what different level courses are, um, and you might not know what the levels mean yet. So just to quickly go through. So when you're doing um, your GCSEs, um, that's level two. And if you achieve at five GCSEs, grades nine to four, including English and maths, that's classed as a full level two qualification. So once you've achieved that, you can progress on to level three, which are traditional learning, which A levels, which you might do in sixth formal college. And then um, vocational learning, which is BTEX and these T levels, which um, at Access Creative College, that's what they run at Access Creative College. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be doing, we're starting, I think the whole the government is actually brand, um, doing it slowly. So there's going to be three different pathways. We're going to be focusing on this um, digital production design and development to start with. So that's what you'd study at, um, at T level at Access. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also apprenticeships, so you can do apprenticeships at level two and level three. And then once you finish level three, you can progress onto higher education. So anything that's above level three, so level four, five or six, that's classed as higher education. And that's things like degrees, foundation degrees and degree apprenticeships. Do you guys do any HE stuff at Access? We do, um, yes, but it's all in Norwich at the moment. Yeah. Um, we do so. a level four uh, qualification in um, uh, artist development. Um, but that, that's your level four. That's only the first part of a, of a degree, I think that yeah. is. 
Perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys so you can. Yeah, that's really useful. Thank, yeah, thank you for that. Would not know what the different levels are yet. So hopefully then, um, obviously, if you're, you're you're in year 10 now, um, normally we would be doing this in person. So we'd be coming to visit you in your setting. Um, so, you know, when you get to year 11, you'll probably be seeing Charlie's lovely face. He's, he can't be with us today, but he'll be coming to join you in your in your set, you know, in your um, your schools and things like that. So, I mean, you've got a bit of a head start now. It's a great opportunity for you to explore our website, have a look at the courses, find out a bit more about us. Um, and if you know if you're looking for something um, creative within a community um, you know no exams as well I will put that one in there because that's sometimes a winner for a lot of people <laughs> you know and you wanting to explore these industries and, and develop your skills in, a, in an environment that's um, you know safe and secure and people want you to challenge yourself and try something new and you know we're there to help you um, you know with your journey into the creative industry so so do take a look on our website and have a look and and keep an eye out for us. Brilliant, thank you guys. Was there any other questions from anybody before we wrap up? I can't see the chat now, so I'm gonna have to shout. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more no, questions. Nothing else? Cool.